Welcome to the Weekly Bull, the broadcast that helps to inform you as a student and a New Yorker in only a few minutes. Now to our newsroom on campus at the King's College. This past Monday, the Office of New York Attorney General Eric T. Schneiderman announced the decisions for two separate suits against Papa John's franchisee, M Star Pizza Incorporated, and its owner, Emmanuel Anu Gallucci. Kings County Justice Johnny Lee Baines issued the nearly $800,000 judgment, which accounted for six years' worth of owed wages, uniform maintenance, and interest to hundreds of employees. Anu Gallucci, who owns seven M Star branches in Brooklyn and Queens, was accused of thinning workers' pay by underreporting hours and neglecting to pay overtime premiums. Schneiderman expressed his satisfaction at Monday's ruling, explaining how the franchisee evaded overtime compensation by awarding workers managerial sounding titles, such as head driver. In an official statement, Schneiderman thanked the United States Department of Labor for its cooperation in providing crucial information and records. Super Bowl 49 took place this past weekend as the defending champion Seattle Seahawks took on Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. After a rather hot and cold first half, the Seahawks came out roaring to start the second half and took a solid 24-14 lead. After a Patriots 3 and out to start the fourth quarter, it seemed that New England's chances to win a fourth Super Bowl had been deflated. But Tom Brady then realized he was Tom Brady. With two minutes and six seconds left in the game, Tom Brady hit Julian Edelman for the three-yard touchdown to take a 28-24 lead. But then Russell Wilson led the Seahawks on what looked like a game-winning drive that featured a juggling 33-yard circus catch by Jermaine Kearse. But with 18 seconds left and the ball on the one-yard line, Russell Wilson threw an interception into the arms of Patriots cornerback Malcolm Butler in one of the most bizarre Super Bowl endings of all time. And now for the top five OATKC posts of the week. A professor, we don't teach you much here that will get you a job. Corey Tim Boom, House Future Committee member. What kind of Christian college doesn't promote dating on Valentine's Day? The Cashmanians. Now that's a good ruling family name for hereditary principality. Wikipedia can't be used as a source, but it can be used as a guide. Seriously, that's how all grad students make it through grad school. A professor who understands. In the Clark Street hallways and staircases. No school! Ah! Last week, food and finance became harmonious as Shake Shack announced its initial public offering at the New York Stock Exchange. As a way to celebrate their IPO, Shake Shack set up a food truck and handed out burgers and Shake Shack merchandise to multitudes of people, from college students to the men of Wall Street. Not only were the free burgers sizzling, but so were their shares. Before the opening bell, shares rocketed from $21 to $48 and settled by the time of closing at 4 p.m at $45.90 a pop. Many King students and faculty took the opportunity to enjoy some free burgers and merchandise from the burger chain. A seven alarm fire burned in a Williamsburg warehouse for more than 10 hours last Sunday. More than 275 firefighters were called to fight the blaze, which was burning a storage facility that houses more than four million copies of city records. According to the New York Times, the records stored are from the state court system and several departments of city health services. Spokespersons from both organizations stated that we do not anticipate this will affect our operations as electronic versions of the files serve as backups. Next Friday, we'll play host to three events on campus. From 9 a.m. until 4 in the afternoon, Barton is holding a bake sale in the fishbowl. At 5.30 p.m. in the Slauset, International Ventures will host a screening of Dear White People. Finally, at 6 in the City Room, there will be six one-act performances that have been directed and produced entirely by students. The Empire State Tribune welcomes King students back to school for the 2015 spring semester. Don't forget to follow the EST on Facebook and Twitter. Signing off, I'm Michael Sheets. Thanks for bearing the bull.